Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Becky. I'm a registered psychologist and in this video I'm going to talk through 13 signs that might indicate that the person you're dating could be an alcoholic. In many societies alcohol is completely normalized and consuming large quantities on a regular basis is not really frowned upon and can be considered the norm. So to decipher whether the person you're dating could actually have a more serious alcohol problem can be difficult. So I'm going to talk through some of the signs that combined together might indicate that there's something going on with this person where actually their difficulties with alcohol are a lot deeper and could be very problematic. And it could be very problematic for you trying to have a relationship with this person. So these are some warning signs. So hopefully if you're watching this video in the early stages of dating someone, you can maybe take, take a step back and decide whether you wanna continue dating this person or whether you want to perhaps try and dodge a bullet. Sign number one, they're gonna love bomb you. Alcoholics are not secure individuals. They have low self-esteem because they haven't worked through all of their difficulties in depth. So therefore, they're gonna rely on the validation of other people. And in the early stages of dating them, they're gonna idolize you. They're gonna put you on an absolute pedestal because they really truly believe that you are amazing. And this is to do with their own self-worth issues. They will, you'll walk into their life and they will be like, you are amazing, I need to prove to this person that I'm worthy, so I need this person to like me. And therefore, they're gonna shower you with compliments, they're going to give you a lot of flattery. You're going to feel fantastic because this is a drug in itself. You're going to feel like, oh my God, where has this person been all my life? They'll make you feel so good. They will also be quite, um, obviously they're going to be quite intense in the beginning, but they are going to make a very quick decision that they will want to be with you. So you will feel very secure actually in the early stages of dating them because they will need your validation so much, they will decide to make it a relationship or to um, make it seem like a relationship. They might not say, I, I've decided we'll be in a relationship. They might say that, um, but they will make you feel so secure because in those early stages, they will have decided that they wanna be with you because they, they idolize you. They believe that you are God and you are validating them. You're making them feel good enough. So if only they can get you, then they will finally feel good enough. So the early stages are gonna feel very calm for you, not very anxiety provoking, if their bad behavior hasn't started to play out yet. So it could be a very, very short period. For other people, it might be a longer period, but the love bombing stage, regardless, is gonna be short-lived, but it will be a stage of them trying to woo you, and you'll feel like, oh my God, I'm, I'm like really adored by this person in this stage. Sign number two, they will act over the top. So alcohol makes people more extroverted. So you are going to see this kind of ridiculous over the top behavior. And this will be when they're drinking. So when they're drinking socially, they are gonna be the life and the soul of the party. Sometimes they'll crack ridiculous jokes. They'll be a bit outrageous. Sometimes that can be very entertaining and people will laugh and people will be having a good time and they might very much um, help you enjoy yourself because they're, they're being extroverted and, and, and you might kind of, you know, play along with that or, you know, you might be part of that. There might be a group part, a part of that and, and this person seems like they have no confidence issues in these moments. But of course, this is actually the alcohol that's bringing out this extroverted behavior in them. And of course, it can lead to social embarrassment sometimes as well. Which leads me to my next point, number three, they will embarrass you in public. So the reason they're gonna embarrass you in public is because their drinking is gonna lead them to be more extroverted at times. And also they're gonna become more impulsive and have poor judgment. So it might just be anything from speaking too loud or doing things that are just socially slightly inappropriate. Like it might be being a bit too tactile with people, being a bit too friendly, hugging too many people when leaving a party or just something where you're like, I wouldn't really have done that. And, um, and this could really embarrass you. It of course depends where your embarrassment threshold is, but regardless, 
you will probably be embarrassed by their behavior at one point or another because it's just constant poor social judgments when they're intoxicated. Number four, they will gaslight you, particularly in relation to defending their alcohol-related behavior, but there might be other types of gaslighting as well. So an example might be, let's just say you take a ride home in a taxi, and they're rude to the taxi driver. The taxi driver is just making some small talk and instead of listening and, and interacting with the, the cab driver when they're speaking, they might just completely ignore them and start talking to you instead. And let's just say you perceive that as a rude behavior, then later on you might want to broach this with your partner and you might want to say, um, can I just talk to you about what happened at the cab? Can I give you some feedback about how your behavior made me feel? And they say, yeah, sure. And then you say, well, I think it was quite rude how you treated the cab driver. They might say, what are you talking about? And then you try to explain what you're talking about and you try to make references to the exact point. They might say, I don't remember that part. And you know, no, that I didn't do that. There might be denial about actually the fact that they even turn to you and ignore the cab driver. So it becomes this kind of crazy making conversation because you can't just have a straightforward, straightforward conversation and make reference points and say examples and that they're on the same page as you, there, there will be a lot of denying and actually saying things didn't happen, didn't happen the way that you saw it, um, what are you talking about, it, I don't remember that. A lot of denial of, of real events that took place. So this kind of gaslighting makes people feel a bit crazy because it makes them question their own, um, their own version of events. Were they accurate? Did they mistake something? Did they mistake what you did or what, what you heard? So. Um, this gaslighting behavior, it's just defensive behavior. It's, it's, it's a thing that people commonly do when they're insecure and they're not able to own up to, to their own bad behavior because it makes them feel bad. It causes a lot of shame and they're not able to deal with shame at all. So they, their, their natural instinct is to be defensive and that's where the gaslighting will come in to dating someone who has an alcohol problem. This leads me to point number five. So then point number five is that they won't participate in conversations about how their behavior impacts you. So if you try to talk to the person that you're dating who has an alcohol problem about how their behavior impacts you, this is going to be very difficult for them. I'm not saying they completely won't engage in the conversation because they might pick up the phone and, and stay on the phone while you're trying to talk to them or they might sit through the conversation but it's gonna be a very difficult conversation for them emotionally. And it's gonna be very hard for them to manage their emotions in that conversation. Um, they might listen, but it might lead them to actually drinking quite heavily after the conversation if you get a kind of a passive participation in the conversation. So passive participation is where they're not getting mad, they're trying to act like they're listening, but they don't really know how to sit with the emotions that are coming about that are created by you just basically saying that their behavior was not appropriate because they interpret that as them not being good enough and that causes too much shame for them. So at the best case scenario, they might be present for those conversations, but not really know how to navigate the conversation or how to, how to be like, you know, thanks for giving the feedback. I'm really sorry I've hurt you and I'll definitely take that on board and um, it's actually quite helpful so I know what might upset you moving forward. You're not gonna hear that from someone who has an alcohol problem. There's gonna be either much more passive participation or they're gonna be very defensive or they're just not gonna be able to handle those conversations. So there might be avoidance or distraction techniques. They might just pick up a random topic and try and distract you with another topic of conversation when you're trying to stay on point. Um, if they know it's, it's the time, the moment you've picked to have a serious conversation with them and sit them down, they might just think of anything to start telling you and talking about in order to try to distract you from staying on point and talking to them about their behavior. So this is gonna be really uncomfortable for them. Point number six, they're gonna be inappropriate. So they might be sexually inappropriate with you, but not necessarily so. They might be socially inappropriate, which could be anything from you're trying to leave a party and you're already in the cab waiting for them and they just keep seeing another person they know and run up to that, that person and start a conversation or hug them. And they're like, just kind of, 
you know, it, it might not be the worst behavior in the world, but it's just not very well thought out when they think, when you think about the situation at hand, you're waiting in the car and they're just taking up this extra time, probably not considering your feelings. Of course, the behaviors might be far worse. Um, you know, I can think of loads of loads of stories I've heard over the years of how socially inappropriate people can be when they actually have an alcohol problem. And this, of course, can be very upsetting for you if you're dating them because it causes embarrassment. Your friends and family member might see that actually this person is not really thinking about their behaviors very carefully and they're not considering you when thinking about how to conduct themselves in, in social situations. Number seven, they will do unnecessary things. And the reason that they'll do unnecessary things is they will be trying to overcompensate for their feelings of inadequacy. Now they feel inadequate because there's a lot of trauma stored inside that they haven't worked on and therefore they just don't feel good enough about themselves. So overcompensating could be absolutely anything at all. It might be that every time you have a huge amount of friends over, they always are the ones to cook and go above and beyond to make sure that everyone is happy. I'm not saying that it has to be that kind of behavior, but it could be overcompensating in another way. It might be ways that they are proving to themselves or proving to you that they're good enough. Um, there might be uh, this might be showing that they're very popular with other people, so therefore going above and beyond socially with others. Um, but it could be anything, anything to prove to themselves and other people that they're good enough. And this actually can be confusing because it, this behavior can either make them look like a saint or make them look incredibly accomplished. So you often see that high functioning alcoholics are often CEOs of companies. I'm not saying all, I'm not saying all CEOs are alcoholics, absolutely not but uh but you know alcoholics can weave the, their way into like any part of society but high functioning alcoholics can do remarkable things they can be in remarkable positions they can be remarkable socially they can look incredible they can look very polished and stylish and there can definitely be a display of being fabulous and in, in some shape or form um or something that is just compensation like unnecessary things unnecessary ways of helping them feel better and good enough about themselves so that others will think that um, as well particularly in the early stages they will want you to think that they're good enough so you will definitely see some of this overcompensating going on number eight they will do things to boost their ego now the things that they will do to boost their ego is basically they will try to achieve something that makes them look very good, but they won't necessarily achieve it for the right reasons or in the right ways or in ways that make sense. So an example of this is a person that I was working with had a CEO job in a company and I was working with them for a while. So I thought, oh, you know, they must have worked really hard to get that job. They must be on a good salary. It obviously looks very good, which is what the person who, who was struggling with the alcohol problem wanted. They wanted to look good. But upon investigating this situation more, it turned out that this person was working for free and had been working for free in the company for a year. And they were trying to raise money, so they, they would eventually, if the, if the company worked out, and that was a very big if, they would eventually get paid the CEO salary. But currently, just to get the CEO title, they were working for a year for free. And not only that, they had actually invested all of their life savings in the company to get 7% of the company in order to be allowed be in the CEO position. It was a case that actually it was other people were involved in this company and the person bought themselves into a, a, a position that they did for free for a year. And actually this was very much an ego thing. The person only wanted to be a CEO because it made them look good. And then it looked like they were living the dream when actually this person had was in financial ruins, was obviously drinking a lot and um, was trying to hold this status. So this is where you actually start to see quite high traits of narcissism in people who have alcohol problems. Now, I'm not saying every alcoholic or every person with an alcohol problem is a narcissist because that would, you know, not that many people actually have full blown narcissistic personality disorder. But actually the reason why you see high traits of narcissism in people with alcohol problems is because people with alcohol problems suppress their emotions. They make sure that they do not feel their emotions completely. They don't lean into their emotions. They don't 
feel their pain in order to heal. And therefore you have people with alcohol problems are not empathic. And where you have people not being empathic because they haven't worked on their emotions fully to the depth that would be healthy for them, then you actually have people who have very high traits of narcissism because people who have high traits of narcissism are self-centered. So this is the reason why people who have alcohol problems are incredibly self-centered. And of course, one of the reasons why you're gonna really struggle in trying to date someone with alcohol problems, they will be self-centered. They will be very low empathy. I'm not saying they're incapable of empathy. They can grow and they can learn empathy once they work on the trauma and once they learn how to feel their emotions and regulate their emotions and heal so they can become high empaths. They can be fantastic empaths in the future if they, if they heal themselves. But right now, if they have an alcohol problem, they're very far away away from becoming an empath and becoming someone who is, is not self-centered and they will currently hold high traits of narcissism because actually anything happens to do with how their behavior hurts other people, it's gonna stir up a lot of shame in them, a lot of difficult emotions, and they will try and suppress those feelings and shove them down. And therefore it, it clouds any capacity for empathy. Um, but you might actually have a lot of caregiving behavior happening with someone who has alcohol problems and that's different from empathy because actually they might respond to emotions quite well because they know it's the right thing to do and it makes them feel good about themselves but it does not necessarily mean that they are highly empathic people because highly empathic people are going to be able to feel bad and care about and feel feel terrible about the fact that their behavior has hurt you and they'll want to rectify it and they'll feel bad that they've made you feel bad and um, people with alcohol problems, they're not able to sit with the difficult emotions of recognizing that actually their behavior has made you feel bad. They're not able to register the um, appropriate amount of guilt for very long, for long enough in, in order to set things right. Of course, they might feel very guilty, but then they'll want to shove those emotions down and will usually use alcohol or even other substances to try to to put that guilt at bay so they're not left struggling with that feeling because people with alcohol problems don't like to feel their feelings for very long and when those feelings start to bubble and emerge they try to suppress them very much. Number nine, you're going to see signs of possessiveness, jealousy and discarding with the person who has alcohol problems that you're dating. The reason for this is they're not going to be very good at managing any of their emotions and you're going to see all sorts of problematic behaviors. Possessiveness because they at times see their worth as being very low and at times they'll see you as being out of their league and their fear of losing you is going to be quite high so they're going to start acting quite possessive they're going to act jealous for the very same reasons and also because they're not very good at regulating their emotions they're going to catastrophize things in their mind and make up stories in their mind because their communication skills are not going to be very good and discarding is because there is traits of narcissism that leads to discarding and devaluing behavior. So this is when they will, will have idolized you in the beginning, and then that switches after you do something relatively minor wrong, but in their head, it's a huge thing, and that all of a sudden, you are no, of no value to them anymore. That's when you're gonna feel discarded. Either they are going to ghost you, distance themselves, or just pull away and you, you feel quite neglected at this point, um, they may start love bombing you again and the whole cycle starts again or the relationship may even end at that point. Number 10, affairs are more common with people who have alcohol problems. And the reason for this is they don't use their emotions to help guide their behavior. So actually they can bury feelings of guilt and anxiety and any of the emotions that would come about for a reasonable person if a reasonable person tries to have an affair or a high empathy person tries to have an affair. So if someone who is in touch with their emotions tries to have an affair, it will kill them. It's very, very difficult and they would either come clean quite quickly or they would stop the behavior quite quickly because they're so in tune with their emotions, their body is telling them there's something not right here, you have to stop, I can't live like this. That's not how the alcoholic lives. They don't feel, that they're, they're feeling a lot and, and that terrifies them and, and they hate that and that's what they can't live with, which is why they're drinking so much. Um, but they're not feeling anything for long enough 
for it to be able to guide them. Because all negative emotions are positive. All negative emotions are our guide and our template as to how to live our best life. There are warning signs. They tell us messages. They tell us what to do, what not to do, and when we've done something wrong. And the emotions that need to come up for people, if you even consider having an affair, are fear and anxiety and guilt and bad feelings. And, and anyone who is in tune with their emotions will, go, will be guided by those feelings and they will usually do the right thing. Sadly, the alcoholic is not feeling their emotions in that way. They haven't learned to do so. Um, they've usually grown up in families where they've had to suppress their emotions from a very young age and they continue to do that throughout life. So feelings are something they're not literate in. They don't know how to use feelings to guide them. And sadly, that means that actually, if you're dating someone who does have alcohol problems, there's a far greater chance that this person might have an affair on you. Number 11, they're overly charming to people where it will benefit them and they're rude to people where it won't. An example of this might be if someone is a member of a private members club, they might be really charming to all the staff, tell them jokes, give them tips, be really friendly to them because they know each time they go into that club that those members of staff are going to be fantastic towards them and it's going to make them look really good. Whereas they leave that club and they get the taxi home, they might be rude to the tax driver because they feel they're never going to see this person ever again. So they're going to be very calculated in relation to who they're friendly and charming to, but it's not going to be consistent because actually you might see that a lot of the time they're charismatic, friendly to a lot of people. And then when you least expect it, they'll just be rude to someone and it might just seem like it's completely out of their character, which might confuse you. But look out for signs that actually they're not consistently respectful to every human. Number 12, they're people pleasers. Because of their low self-esteem, people who have alcohol problems will be people pleasers. And this is not a good thing. So this might range from not being able to tell people the truth, not being able to be direct with people, staying in relationships for longer than they want to, actually not being able to break up with people because they don't want to upset them, doing things compulsively for people. So they might be compulsive caregivers and they might not be able to say no to people. So they might go above and beyond to make people happy even when they don't want to. So if you ask them for things, they might actually do it, but hold a grudge against you later because they haven't been able to say no. So this people pleasing or compulsive caregiving will take its toll on them. And you'll start to see after a while that actually the things they, that they do that are so helpful and make them look like they're an absolute saint are things that they actually really don't like to do, don't want to do, but feel very obligated to do so because actually their sense of self is quite fractured. So they don't feel that they're actually just worthy and good enough as a person and they can just be themselves and they don't really need to try so hard. They feel like they need to try very hard to feel good enough about themselves. And finally, number 13, they will have signs of mental health difficulties. These signs might be subtle or they might be quite big signs, but it could be anything from them disclosing to you that every couple of years they feel quite suicidal or that not that long ago they had a breakdown or a number of years ago they had a breakdown that was very serious. Um, or you'll also see signs that they don't really want to address their emotions fully. So while they might be able to speak openly about trauma and they might be able to be open about things, there will be signs that they're not quite ready yet to fully address things. So if you have spotted many of these signs in the person that you're dating, it's quite possible that they might have an alcohol or a substance problem. And there's a few points that I want to make in relation to this, because you might be wondering what to do next and can you stay in a relationship with this person and can they change? Well, the first point I want to make is that they can't be helped unless they really want to be. So, you can't just play helper to this individual and hope that your desire for them to change is actually going to be effective because they might not be ready to change themselves and they might not be ready for help. So try not to get caught in this cycle of sticking in there and becoming this codependent person in their life who is just trying to make them feel better and make them change and um, wishful thinking 
can be something that people really get wrapped up in because they get so hopeful that this individual can get better and change, but actually fixing your partner is never a good game to be trying to play. My next point that I wanna say is they cannot actually fall in love properly with someone else. And the reason they can't do this is because they don't love themselves fully, which is a point you've probably heard many times before, but it goes deeper than that. They haven't learned to feel their emotions properly. And then that means they can't actually feel true feelings of love. Because if you really lean into true feelings of love, you're leaning into a lot of vulnerability. And you're also, in order to love someone, you have to be able to feel empathy for that person. And they're not capable of consistently feeling empathy. And they particularly cannot feel empathy when you were talking about how their behaviors are impacting you because they won't want to recognize themselves as not being perfect and not being ideal sometimes. So the, their lack of empathy will limit the amount that they can really care for you. Yes, they might say that they love you, um, but their love will be inconsistent. So maybe it will be a version of love, but it's not going to be a healthy, loving relationship. And my very final point that I wanna say is that actually addiction is worse for the people who are closest to the addict than it even is for the addict themselves at times. Because when they're not feeling their own pain, you're gonna be feeling it. And you're gonna be taking on an awful lot of that. And you're gonna be suffering as a result of all of the behaviors that they're gonna do, which is not gonna be considerate of you. So the best thing to do if you're in the very early stages of dating an alcoholic and you're recognizing these signs is just to walk away and say that you can't sustain this relationship. You can't, this is not, this is not something that is going to be possible for you to move forward with, particularly if they've already done these things that cross your boundaries and you've already tried to have conversations with them about inappropriate behaviors and, and try to establish your boundaries and try to have difficult conversations with them. And if those conversations have just not gone anywhere and they haven't corrected things in the very early days, you are better off leaving this person. It's it's tougher if you've been in this relationship for a very long time, um, but you do need to think about what you're doing to yourself in sustaining this relationship and how much are you hurting? And actually, do you, well, well you should always put yourself first because your oxygen mask needs to go on first before you can be really great at attending to other people. And in staying in a relationship with an alcoholic, your oxygen mask has not gone on first. And that's the problem with this. If your oxygen mask doesn't go on first and you're attending to this other person's needs first, you're putting them first, you're gonna suffer. Your mental health is gonna suffer severely and that's gonna leave you in a very dark and painful place. And that's why you end up almost having an addiction as well you end up really suffering as if you have an addiction. And in a way it is a love addiction because you're addicted to trying to make something work. You're addicted to this relationship. You're addicted to a very painful relationship. You're addicted to a painful dynamic if you don't leave this situation very early on. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to write them in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to answer them. You can follow me over on other platforms such as TikTok and Instagram at Dr. Becky Spellman. And if you wanna see more of my content, please subscribe to my channel.